folks, in Greedyville tonight, there is a man on the loose saying that it's going to rain. We haven't even seen rain. We don't even know what rain is. Let's go over to him. There's no need to panic. There's no need to worry. You can continue with your day-to-day -day life. Thank you folks and have a good night. Hello and welcome again to the preteen Sunday school class. As you can see, we're still talking about Noah and let's review very quickly what we've learned so far. Last week we talked about commitment and what that takes to please God and the week before that remember we talked about righteousness. Well, God favors, favors those things. But before we get into the lesson, let's open with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for today. We thank you, God, for your mercies. We thank you, Lord, for your blessing us to see another day, God. We thank you, Lord, for opening our understanding, God. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. So, once again, last week we talked about commitment. The week before we talked about righteousness because those are things that God favors. This week, we're going to talk about obedience. And obedience goes hand in hand with righteousness and with commitment. But before we get into our lesson, I want you to, I want to show you some pictures. Um, as you can see, there's a picture of a stop sign, picture of a yield sign, picture of a red light, green light, and other construction signs. Now, you may wonder, how are these related to Noah building an ark? Well, today we're going to talk about obedience. Just like those stop signs, the construction signs, and the traffic signs, they were built for protection. The ark was built for protection. That's what rules are put in place for. Do we like rules all the time? No, we don't. But when we understand and we want to please God, we can see the blessings that we gain from being obedient. Not being obedient, not being committed, not being righteous are things that are not pleasing to God. And when you are not in those things, you lose the protection and ultimately you lose the blessing. When Noah built the ark, he chose to obey God. Obedience is a series of choices. You guys will soon be faced with some choices that you'll have to make regarding your life. And you want to make the right choice. How do you make the right choice? You build a relationship with God. Noah made the choice to obey God. He made the choice to listen to God's voice, to build his relationship, and ultimately build the ark that saved himself and his family. Choices are decisions that we make. Some are good, like the choice that Noah made to obey God's voice and build the ark and some are not good as you can see what happened to the people that did not listen to Noah to repent to get on the ark as Noah was urging them to do they made the choice to listen to the weather reporter who said that there was no rain coming but Noah decided to listen to God's voice twice in Genesis 
the Bible mentions that God that Noah obeyed everything that God told him to do in Genesis chapter 6 verse 22 it says that Noah obeyed everything and then again in Genesis chapter 7 verse 5 Noah did everything that God instructed him to do and it ultimately saved his life so when you make the right choice a God-based choice you save your life and you gain the favor and the blessings of God obedience is not just words that we say but it's demonstrated in our actions how did Noah demonstrate his obedience to God he demonstrated his obedience by building the ark God told him exactly what to do exactly what materials he needed and he went and got those and he built the ark and ultimately saved himself and his family another example in the Bible of demonstration of obedience is Abraham Remember when God told him to sacrifice his son Isaac? That was not an easy thing to do. But in his obedience to God, he did. And guess what? God provided a ram in the bush. And one more example of a demonstration of obedience to God is Moses. Moses' demonstration to God in his obedience was going to Pharaoh God told him to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. Did that happen the first time? No. So Moses went back again and again and again until ultimately they were free from slavery. Obedience requires patience. How many of us have patience? Do you have patience? I have some patience, but not enough patience. And I will admit that. But in obedience to God, Noah built the ark. And it took him a very, very long time to build the ark. Probably decades to build the ark. But it's okay. Because, it, again, it ultimately saved his life. So, they get on the boat. God closes the door. Now they're waiting on the boat. And they're waiting. They're waiting. And they're waiting like for over a year. Do you think the COVID-19 quarantine is a long time? What if you had to wait on the boat with animals for over a year? That's a long time. But they did not get out of the boat. They stayed on the boat as God instructed them to. And when it was time to come off, God gave them instructions that they could come off. So they were blessed. They did not perish like the rest of the world did. They waited patiently, and when it was time, they were blessed. Don't miss your blessing being impatient. Obedience has to be personal. The Bible tells us that we should obey the gospel. And what is the gospel? It's the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is our personal obedience to God. So we repent and we obey the death of Jesus Christ. In baptism, in Jesus' name, the Bible says that we are buried with him. So we obey the burial of Jesus Christ. And in obeying his resurrection, we are freed when we become filled with his spirit. Who wants God's spirit to live inside of them? I want God's spirit to live inside of me every day. I want to take a trip on that old gospel ship because I want to go home far beyond the sky. If you want Jesus to live inside of you and you want to be personally obedient to him, I want you to stand up and I want you to lift your hands and we're going to talk to Jesus. And we're going to ask him to come and live on the inside of us. We want to be obedient. You ready? Let's pray. God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your spirit, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for the price that you paid at Calvary for our sins, God. For the blood that you shed. And Lord, we want to be obedient to you, Lord. So we repent right now, God. We're sorry, Lord, for the things that we did that were not pleasing to you, Lord. 
We're repenting to you, Lord. Help us, God, to be obedient to your word, Lord. Help us, Lord, to do the things, God, that you have instructed us to do. To do the things, God, that you have called us to do, God. We ask you, Lord, to help us to answer, oh God, every call, Lord. When you want us to give a testimony, Lord, help us, God. Give us the boldness to tell our testimony to others, oh Lord. We ask you, Lord, to bind the enemy, oh God, of our souls, Lord. Give us the strength to overcome in the name of Jesus. Oh God, let your spirit come to live on the inside of us, Lord. And we know that your spirit living on, on the inside of us, God, when we have the initial sign of speaking with other tongues, oh God. And Lord, we thank you today, God. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for your resurrecting power, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for blessing us to be obedient to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm glad you could join us. And if you'd like to know more about being obedient to God, or if you have any questions or any comments that you'd like to say, feel free to reach out to us. Have a blessed week. And remember, don't miss your blessing by being impatient. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, I'm gonna take the trip. Amen.